Okay, welcome to the final episode of Neuroembryology for Medical Students. These are the conclusions now. In the next five minutes, we'll go over everything you need to know. So we'll start off with the primitive streak. In the day 17, epiblasts, cells start going towards the midline and diving down to give those three germ layers. There's the primitive streak. As time goes on, it regresses to the caudal end and disappears. There's the rostral axis up here, rostral caudal axis. Notochord begins from the primitive pit there, dives down and moves towards the cephalic end. And the notochord is that signaling center that causes the epiblast to start differentiating into the neural plate and begins neurulation. So we're looking at it from both the transverse and the apical view. You can see the epiblast in blue, the neural plate in dark green, and those neural crust cells start coming up together. You can see them there in both views. And as they contact each other, the neural crest cells detach. The epiblast remains constant and the neural tube becomes patent. That's at about day 28 there. So quick note on the spinal cord length here. Spinal cord itself ends at that level, the conus medullus. And below that is the dural sac and inside there are individual nerves. The vertebral columns grow obviously down to the coccyx. And the reason this occurs is the rate and growth of the vertebral columns is a lot faster than that of the nerves. On to pathology, what can go wrong? You've got the neural tube defects, you've got primitive streak defects and notochord defects. So neural tube defects, you can have AN cephaly, which is a problem with the cephalic neuropore closure. There is no cranial development, not compatible with life. Spina bifida, have a larger range, you've got occulta, which is the hidden version, where you have problems with the vertebral bodies, the vertebral arches closing around the spinal cord, and aperta, which is the apparent type, which goes from having cysts of the meninges up to having nerves themselves exposed. Really reinforcing that 400 micrograms of folic acid every day should be given to every pregnant woman. It can reduce the incidence of those spinal tube defects by to 70%. Primitive streak defects give rise to sacrococcygeal teratomas. They've got those all, all the germ layers there, and those teratomas found in the pelvis can be just as big or even bigger than the fetuses themselves. Notochordal defects, the most rare of these pathologies, give rise to chordomas, which are either found at the cephalic or the caudal end of the spine. Note on the neural crest cells, they are found here the epiblast and the neural plate on either side. They move up towards to contact each other. As you do that, create the neural fold seen here. And finally, once they contact, the neural tube and the epiblast detach from each other and the neural crest cells are free to go off and differentiate into many different types of cells, but they can be broadly classified into the mesectoderm, the endocrine functions, the peripheral nervous systems, and melanocytes and pigment. On the parts of the brain now, you've got the three big parts, the prosencephalon, mesencephalon, and the rhombencephalon, the forebrain, midbrain, the hindbrain. You can see it here overlaid onto an embryo. And But more simply, you've got here, you can see it folding over ventrally, creating that, the need for having the rostrocaudal axis, as well as the anterior and posterior, or dorsal ventral axis. Those parts of the brain differentiate into well, the midbrain goes to the telencephalon, which is your cerebrum, the diencephalon, which is your thalamus and hypothalamus. Midbrain just stays as one section. The hindbrain develops into the mesencephalon, which gives you your cerebellum and your pons, and the myelencephalon, which is the medulla oblongata. At the bottom there, you've got the spinal cord, which travels the length of the body. Okay. So you've completed this module now. There are no more episodes left to work through. I would very much welcome feedback as this is my first learning module I've published. So if you just click on my email address down there and send me what you think. On the next slide, there is some recommended reading. I'll give you a second to click on my email address first. You can always come back to this. OK, here's your view of the reading. Have a click on any of those. Alternatively, you can go back to episode one, start all over again.